Let's hope it up. <laughs> That's throwback. You're showing your age. Hey everyone, welcome to North Courts where it is all about the Olympics now, all about that women's hype. They are in Group A with Spain, Serbia, and Korea. Megan, when you look at that group, how tough is it? I think their biggest challenge is probably going to be uh, Spain and Serbia, really and truly. You think of Spain being, uh, you know, FIBA world ranking number three and, and Serbia in the top 10 as well too. I believe they're at number eight. Uh, as we as we speak today, but I think those are going to be the two biggest tests. Korea, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they are in the top 20, sitting at 19. But Canada has a really good shot in this group. I think this is their best bet and probably the best draw they could have had with group play, uh, having to take on two teams uh, that are in the top 10 in the world. And I think that this is a situation where Canada can get the better of both of them. Uh, we know that the international game is much different from the WNBA and the NBA, but the good thing that Canada has is this roster is familiar with playing international basketball. Yes, this is uh, a little bit different of a roster than what they had and who they had in Puerto Rico a couple of weeks ago with the America Cup, but now you're plugging in players in Kia Nurse, Natalia Chanwa, and Bridget Carlton, who were not serviceable for uh, Coach Tomitis. So you're plugging in players who have played at the international level and understand the game. So where we saw the Canadian men kind of have some slip ups with the adjustment, I don't think we're going to necessarily see those same slip ups because also too, this is a roster of players who are familiar with the game, like I said, and they're familiar with each other. So I think we're going to see that chemistry pick up really quickly. And the one thing they have in their, in their back pocket is the fact that they were one of the few teams that made the decision to head to Japan early to one, get acclimatized, to deal with the uh, COVID quarantine uh, restrictions and guidelines and also get, get used to the uh, time difference because Japan is, what, 13 hours ahead of, of Toronto? Um, and that'll also give them a chance to bond and, and build that off-the-court chemistry that will then translate on the court. So I think they have a very, very good shot in this group. I think it was the best draw they could have gotten. I'll say one thing. We're talking about the Olympics. So it doesn't matter what group, what draw you get. These are the top teams in the world. It's, it's going to be tough to get out. But, you know, like you said, Megan, you have, some, you have some pieces on this team that have been battle tested, have been around the block a couple of times, have played for Lisa Tomaitis and, you know, understand what's at stake with at one FIBA competition, but two, the Olympics. They've been there. You add in some pieces, some youth that are, you know, young legs get up and down the court and are starting to understand, have been integrated into the culture you have the foundation of a team, foundational pieces to be successful. I think they're going to be all right. I think they're going to be good. Um, again, like you said, maybe there's three teams that are top 10 in the world in this group, and it's going to be a battle. Um, I, I think Spain may be their biggest test, but they have pieces. Size, you know, they have some perimeter play. And Shayna P, Shayna P, uh, def that, defensive, that defensive mindset, that, def that defensive grit, I'm always a fan of hers. I'm excited to see them get out there and lay it on the line. I like the way the group sets up too because you have Canada playing Spain in that final group stage game. So both teams might know exactly what they're playing for at that stage and uh, you expect a big battle between the third ranked and the fourth ranked teams. On that note, how important is it for Canada to try and finish first here? Because the way things set up, there will be a draw after to figure out who plays each other in the quarterfinals. You finish with a top seed chances are you're probably able to avoid an early clash with the United States. Finishing first sets that precedence. I think it allows teams not one, it gives your team confidence, but it's going to let those other teams know that you're serious, you're here to play um, and there to fear you. You know, that that fear aspect is, an, is a component that often we, we dismiss and don't speak of and is of, often spoke of when, you, when you're talking about the United States based on talent. But if they're able to go out there and establish them as one of the, not just, you know, number four team uh, globally in FIBA rankings, but one of the teams that are, has been here, has the experience, is tough, is gritty, they put that fear, they instill that fear in everybody else. And I think that carries over. Like, you want that. It doesn't matter who you're going to face in the next phase. That's always going to be something that's in the back of your mind, and you want that because it, it's almost like, you know, that big brother, little brother, or, or big sister, little sister um, component. It's just, I'm going to take advantage of you, and this team has to prepare for me. Yeah, Javon, you're exactly right. And I think, too, 
uh, the when you're looking at this, the best thing to do is determine your own destiny. That's what you can control. Control what you can control in this situation. And if Canada control everything on their end and take care of business and get things done in group play and finish first in their group, then they've controlled their own destiny to the best of their ability. The worst thing that could happen is they put themselves in a position where they need, you know, team A to help them out by losing by a certain amount of points or team B to win by a certain amount of points. And team A and B are playing each other in the final game. All they have to do is control what they can control and everything will fall where they may. If they allow other things to have to factor into uh, them finishing first, second, you know, third or fourth, then things get dicey. As long as they take care of business and control their own destiny, it's easy peasy for them. It's funny you say that because I've been there before. I've been in those situations. And despite what you think, it's draining. It takes life out of you just sitting there watching a team counting points and just hoping a team, you know, one team beats the other, you wake up the next day, you feel like you played a full game. It beats you up. So you, like you said, you want to control your destiny. You want to control your faith and, and control what you can control. Best things in those situations, Shep, I don't know if you'd agree, but for me, it was playing at the same time. So you can't even focus on that. <laughs> Hey, you know what was draining? Watching Spain take out Canada at the 2018 FIBA World Cup. So we got a little revenge to look to uh, when they clash. Now, in terms of getting over the hump and, you know, Canada really achieving all that they can achieve, I think all eyes are going to be on Kia Nurse uh, and the big names that we have. Who are maybe the biggest names that you're expecting a lot out of for Canada to really reach their potential, Megan? I think, you know, and this might seem like an easy answer, but it's the collective team. That's the one thing I really like about uh, the, the senior women's national team. And this roster specifically is you have your big names, you have your Kia nurses, your uh, Natalia Chan was, uh, you know, you look at uh, Shine P, P with the defense. They can all be great individually. But what I like about this roster is when they are at their best, and they are at their greatness is when they collectively piece together and the puzzle pieces fit in where they need to be. When you have Kia doing what she needs to do, when you have a Bridget Carlton knocking down big shots and timely shots when she needs to, when you have uh, a Kayla Alexander crashing the boards the way that she does, but also to setting really hard screens the way that she can. When this roster can play the way they're supposed to and the way that they're expected to within each role that each player has set for them and the coaching staff has set for them, that is when this team is at their best and absolute best. That is what I am looking for and expecting from Team Canada in this Olympics is to be on the same page from start to finish in every single game and every single match for 40 minutes. That's when they're at their absolute best. And I'll add to that. Imagine what that does for your opponents. How do you scout a team like that? How do you prepare for a team like that that is accomplishing goals by committee? It's it's tough. You know, you can't come out and you can't focus on Kia Nurse. You can't focus on a Bridget Carlton. You can't focus on a Natalie. Um, you know, with that being said, this team is well-rounded. They have a number of pieces that do different things, can play different positions, and, and again, have that experience. I'm actually excited for Letitia Amahir. She came off, you know, a really good America Cup tournament, led them in points, rebounds, and most importantly, efficiency at such a young age. Um, as a player, former player, you're looking, you always went to the box score, you looked at everything else but efficiency, and when coaches didn't play you, they looked at that stat, which is used in FIBA, and, and use it against you. But now, you know, it, it, it says so much. It, it speaks to the impact she has on the game and the 18 minutes that she averaged. That was a big impact. So I'm excited to see how she fits in on this stage uh, with some of the older women that are, that are playing here and just adjusting to this game, this intensity with so much at stake. But like you said, by committee, it's really hard for teams to, to really scout and put together a, a game plan uh, when you don't know what's gonna hit you when. Saga, stand up. I love the shout out. Changing gears for a second. Let's look at the 3x3 basketball that's coming up for the first time at the Olympics. No Canadian teams involved, but what's your level of interest? What's your level of curiosity to see how this event goes? It's nostalgic. Megan, I think you can attest to this too. I, we all grew up playing 3 on 3 basketball in, you know, in the playgrounds and so forth. Hoop it so, up. Um, <laughs> hoop, hoop it up. Who, you know, everybody remembers hoop it up. But, when you think about it, I mean, it's, it's a little different because the, the speed of the game is, is so much faster. 
Um, the tactics, the schemes are different, but I think it brings you, us all back to that childhood and just, just to see it on that o Olympic stage, I think it's something that's going to continue to grow and become you know, a powerhouse uh, Olympic event. I agree with you. I think this is something that is not a gimmick. It's not just to you know, hand more medals out. I think it's another way that you can grow the game of basketball globally, especially when you think of the nations who they might not have their full 12 person roster playing on either the men's or the women's side, but they might have their uh, 3x3 roster playing in the 3x3 tournament. This also too gives your uh, country another opportunity to send more basketball athletes to the Olympics to play basketball because you think of the fact that you have a 12 person roster that you have to dwindle down from 60, 80, 40 players, and you only have 12 spots. Now you have another set of rosters because I believe the roster is set at four players. So you mm -hmm. actually have now four other people that you can send to the Olympics to play basketball. Yes, it's a, a an interesting style of basketball because it's different from the five, the five on five, but it's another way to send more athletes to the Olympic games to represent your nation and, and wear your, your nation on your chest. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity for the game of basketball and it can grow globally because we may see countries who don't have a 12 person roster, but have enough players to field a three X three roster playing at the Olympics. Maybe one day we see a team Jamaica or a team Bahamas playing in three X three basketball, which we typically don't see them play on, on the full scale 12 person roster side of, of the Olympics. So this just means that countries and nations now have more chances to send teams to play basketball. And let's not forget it's fundamentally sound basketball. If you watch any of the three on three play, they move the ball extremely well. They pass the ball, they shoot the basketball, they cut off the ball. So it, that's something that can translate, like you said, Megan, into you know five on five FIBA competition because it's the same brand of basketball that we've been seeing from some of the some of the European teams in just moving the basketball, shooting the basketball, passing the basketball, just really fundamentally sound uh, basketball. Megan, I love the point that you made about opportunity because if you look at the path to get here, the Netherlands knocked out the USA to qualify for the three X three. And you're looking at that, it, it, you'd be thinking five on five, whoa, that's never going to happen. And now because you've created these avenues where you can have more players involved, you can have that opportunity. And so there's other countries that'll be looking at that and saying, hey, we can get a gold in basketball and we can compete on this stage and go get it done for ourselves. So I love that it's going to create more avenues and hey, create more passion for the game, period. Now. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll have tons of coverage for the women's games that are coming up at the Olympics. Again, Group A against Serbia, Spain, and Korea. It should be a fun time. We will have all of it for you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.